Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Waters. We do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at odd-oracle.com. That's odd-oracle.com. Tim did an amazing workshop for us. Um, it was a great workshop. Uh, we're going to be doing more of those workshops. Uh, Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? All right. I sent you over some charts. So, I have uh, them. Have we got time to go through them? Uh, we definitely got time, man. Yeah. All right. So you want uh, we start with chart one. Okay. And it's kind of just, this looks at the bigger picture. This doesn't try to pick out, um, you know, the day of the low, I guess you might say, but does get you close to the the uh, lows in general. Okay. And uh, what what it is is the weekly um, American Association of Individual Investors Bull Bear Ratio. And all it is, it kind of measures what the individual investors are doing out there. If they're bearish, usually that's a bullish sign. Uh, if they're bullish, uh, it's usually a bearish sign. And today, they actually... Uh, I circled in red there and where, where they that. were actually yesterday, which is 0.55. And anything below 0.75, you're looking at a low. Now, now that's the market's gone up. Uh, this is yesterday's reading, but the, you know, the market's gone up for over a week. It's not up today, but it was straight up. And these guys remain, you know, on the bearish, uh, bearish right. side of things. Right. So that that bodes well for the bigger picture is what I'm saying. Not to say we can have some short term pullbacks. Most likely we will at some point and maybe maybe starting one right now, I don't know. But on the bigger picture, you know, over the next several months anyhow, this is a bullish sign. Yes. So that that's kinda of the bigger picture. Now let's flip it to chart two. Okay. And uh the t the top window, uh I use this arms index a lot. It, uh the trend or arms, they're both the same thing. Richard Arms came up with, I think, back in the 1970s, yep. whatever. But it, it measures volume and it measures uh, up volume and down volume and also measures advance and declines. And it combines all in a, into a, a um, ratio. Yeah, it's just basically it's, it's advancing yes. issues over declining issues divided by up volume divided by down volume. And you do all those ratios, and you come out with a number. One is basically everything's neutral. Uh, you got as much up volume as down volume on advancing issues, declining issues, it doesn't say much. But when you start getting volume on the down issues, this ratio starts to rise. And you would think that would be bearish, uh, but it, it's really not. It's actually bullish. And the more people rely on the sell side on their declining stocks, the more bullish that becomes. And so when you get this ratio on a 10-day average, so that's like two weeks of trading. Uh, this is a 10 trading day. Thing. Yes. Uh, I use a 10-day. And you get up around 1.2, you got a lot of down volume on a lot of down stocks in general. And uh, that turns out to be a bullish sign. And all that uh, uh, shaded pink areas are times when that ratio was above 1.2. Um, so... Uh, currently, we had, uh, going back here, it looks like about the October, we had a bunch of, uh, had a reading near 1.2. Currently, we're at 1.18. It's it's more bullish than bearish. Yeah, because uh, we, yesterday... With, with the market yeah, flying up. Yeah, yesterday, I mean, yeah, look at this, folks, okay, because this is, this is a big divergence. Yesterday, we have a closing one of 1.52, man, and the market, you know, yeah. was up slightly. It's like, okay, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and actually, the day before that was yep. 1.23. The day before that, this is three days ago, 1.28. Yep. So as the market was going up, I, I, you know, people are kind of selling it here. Right. So... Um, so let's get to the just of of what we're talking about. I, I sent you another chart three, and what, that, what I'm going to do it. is just flip to chart four. Oh, chart four? Uh, three, three, four. Okay, I got four. Yep. Yeah, four. It's it's, it's kind of um, here's where we, we really are. If you look at um, the back in the um, April May period, you know, it's shaded in light blue. And uh, the market was straight. We we covered this quite a few different times, but that April May period uh, was uh, bumping against the February highs. And I, uh, we talked on your show. Uh, this is the BVIX VIX ratio, 
and there's two. I look at it both ways. There's a VIX to VVIX ratio, which goes against the trend. In other words, when that when that rate's going up, the market's going down. Well, this one kind of just reverses it. So when the S and P's are going up, up, I hear the music. Uh, just, so. stay, just stay right there, folks. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials down 220, and Nasdaq off 116. S and P's are up 34. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow. The Dow Industrials right now are down 228. Nasdaq's off 126. We have the S&Ps off 37. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Wood. And we are, I'm on uh, the third chart that you sent, uh, Tim, which is the, um, the spy over the... I got that. Uh, uh, we're, we're doing uh, chart number four. Okay, so chart number four is the TLT over the VIX. Of the, is that right? That, that'd be chart five. Um, five, okay. Oh, I see. So I thought you wanted to re 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 replace. You didn't want me to replace one? You Just one second. Hold on. I can, I can. Oh, yeah. Actually, I just skipped that chart, uh, which is chart three. Uh, I could. We can go over that chart. Uh, the one, the new chart. I, I had a chart three, and I updated it and sent you another one, chart three. Yeah, I have that one up. Let's do that one first, and we'll go back. Okay, and that's VIX to VVIX ratio? Okay. Uh, is it? Yes, it is. I believe. One second. This one says spy. Hold on. One second, man. Be up in the top right, top left corner. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's what it is. Yes, that's what it is. Yes. This. All right. Okay. Just okay. That's chart three. Let's flip to chart four. Okay. I'm gonna put, just just. That's yeah. the daily. That's the TLT, and the VVIX, right? No, it'd be a VIX. To, I see that'd be uh, that's chart five. Okay. Okay. Chart hold on. One, just give me one second. One second. Sorry about this, folks. So well, I'll get this. One second. Hold on, because there's only one chart right. that I didn't. Put up, but I I miss I misunderstood. Okay, we weren't replacing right. it. One second, just give me one second. I'll get this right now. Okay, where where'd you go, Jacob? Oh, where's your hat? Oh my God, I can't find his hat now. Jacob, if you hear me, yeah. can we send it over again? Okay, let, let's do the the TLT, the VVIX first. And then All right. Go. Okay, let's let's do that. Okay. Okay, that one. Now this is um, uh, okay. Yeah, the middle window. Is a daily TLT, which is a bond market, over the VVIX, which is a VIX of the VIX. Yes. And you wouldn't think this would draw any conclusions of anything worthwhile, but it really does. And there's a divergence process and there's an acceleration process. And we talked about, actually, uh, we had this similar chart on the, our webinar on Tuesday. Yes. And what I want to show you, uh, the, the, the top window is the rate of change, the 10 period rate of change for the uh, tilt VVIX. And the right and the second window down from the top is the RSI 10. In other words, a two week uh, RSI. And I pointed out the divergence, but also I pointed out the acceleration. So when this, this ratio accelerates to the downside, and both those ROCs and RSIs gets over oversold, you're looking at a short-term low, and all those red dotted lines across the chart are when that happens. It can also work the other way. When there's acceleration to the upside, there's also a consolidation or a reversal, and that happens when the uh, RSI 10 and, and ROC 10 reach above, uh, well, RSI be above 70, and the rate of change would be above uh, actually 30. And that's that the blue lines cross the chart. I see that. Well, yep. yes yeah. So yesterday we reached, you know, about 40. So that ratio has gone up too fast, too quick. And so it's due for a rest as it means the top. You know, sometimes it means consolidation. If you look at the April period of 2023, I got circled in blue on the bottom chart there. I see that. Okay. Wise. Yeah, it just went sideways. And the other two times they had minor pullbacks, but neither one hit uh, new lows or anything. It kind of just stalled the rally. So I'm doom thinking we've gone up too fast. You know, what's going to do next is, is probably uh, also uh, we've been up eight days in a row going to yesterday. Up eight days in a row, predict the market will be higher 100% of the time 
This is over the last five years. Within five days, and the average gain is 0.7. It's about the same statistics as up seven days in a row. So even though there could be a minor pullback here, with such a momentum up, now there's five, six, seven days up in a row, or eight days in our case, uh, the market just doesn't top and go back down. It amazingly has a mild consolidation, but it goes up again. So will next week be a down week? Yeah, maybe the first part of next week, but probably towards the end of next week is probably going to go up. Now, because Tim, our, no, no, I know. I, mean, I was going to ask you this question. <laughs> so. I was going to ask this question because I was well aware from when you were on on Tuesday explaining the, the deal that if you're up seven or eight days, it's 100 percent of five days later. Is that five trading days, Tim, or just days in yeah. general? Trading days. Yeah, okay, that's, cool. That's five trading days. Okay. So, you know, yesterday, so that would predict next Thursday yep. would be a higher high. So can you have a pullback zone? Now, if you're thinking about puts in here, it's, it's probably a bad idea. I'll put it that way. Right. Uh, right. So, uh, but, you know, I, I guess if you, I don't know how the pullback's going to work. You know, if you get a, if you get a 10 day trend up around you know, close to 1.2, that's not an ideal short period. You know, if you're down around 0.8, yeah, maybe, but not up around 1.2. And so don't get bearish. But did you get that other chart? I have it yeah. up right now. Yes, I do. That's the, the VVIX slash VIX. That's what I have up, okay? All right, okay. Uh, this this chart, um, if you look at the, the first light blue area okay that's the time of april may time period tested the uh february high as the market went sideways yes and we talked on your radio i'm thinking now nah, we're going to go higher the reason why higher because of this ratio the vvx to vix ratio it was breaking out to new highs and right. so uh currently uh the the left hand blue area currently we're testing the october highs right now on the S and P's, and if you notice that ratio is making higher highs. Same situation we had back in the uh, April May period, testing the February highs. I see that. So if there, yeah. So if there's a mild consolidation coming, uh, you know we're probably going to start breaking up again. So I I don't know how big the consolidation is, but in my opinion, it should be pretty minor according to the eight day rule, eight days up in a row or seven days up in a row, and you got a trend of uh, 1.18, which are, neither one is bearish plus a bullish divergence on the BBX VIX ratio. So, you know, don't know what next week. Plus, there's another statistic, too. Next week is the 10th weakest week of the year. Is it? 10th, uh, yeah. Man, you get so, so many statistics. It's uh, so cool. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, sh I should get a life or something. But <laughs> I do this instead. Well, you know, no, so... <laughs> So watch this, folks. This is kind of intriguing. It was really intriguing because, you know, if we have this S&P up seven or eight days in a row, you get 100 percent of five days later. We're talking like next Wednesday to Thursday, you know. So so picture it would be kind of cool if you did have some sort of a pullback, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, for some reason, you know, you get an expansion, you know, topside. I mean, the, as soon as Powell was talking out, Powell was talking at two o'clock today, Tim, in the IMF. And he was much more uh, hawkish than he was even when the Fed basically came out with their, um, you know, statement last week. Yeah, just stay right there, Tim. Stay right there, folks. We're going right. to shot break. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. We have the Dow down 236, NASDAQ off 136, S&P's off 39. Tim and I come right back, folks. Well, welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Boyd, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate your growling and prowling with us. We have the Dow. The Dow's trading down 240, NASDAQ off 140, S&P's are off 39. And the chart that we're looking at right now is the, uh, the VVIX slash VIX. So, okay, yeah. Um I just sent you another chart on gold. Uh, did okay. That Jacob, get it? Yep. He I'll, it I'll, he'll, let's see. We will, we will get that. We will get that. Beautiful. One, two, three. Okay. Let's see. It's, I'll get them. It's, yep. It's Good, go ahead. Inflation deflation ratio. Yep. Okay. That, that's all right here. One second. Go ahead. You can start talking about it. He'll he'll get it right over to me. All right. All right. Yeah, I sent it a couple just a minute ago. Okay. 
I thought this is worth covering because this is a pretty rare. It's uh, it's Martin Pring's inflation deflation ratio. Martin Pring's been around uh, longer than I have. Yeah, no, a long <laughs> time. Of, both of us. So is he's a. Uh, Anyhow, I came up with this ratio. I actually don't know what the internals are, but uh, over time has worked. This chart goes back to mid-2015, and I marked the times. This is on a weekly time frame. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's on a weekly time frame, and I just used an RSI for it, and that was it. And it, it did extremely well picking out uh, the bottoms, and it actually does pretty well in the tops, too, but it, it does really well at the bottoms. And you don't get many signals on this chart, uh, but when you do, it's, it's worked really good. It, it picked out. Uh, you got the chart up yet? Not yet. Okay. Go ahead. That's all right. Um, Just keep talking. But anyhow, um, the second window up from the bottom. So when you get to it, was I thought? Uh, I got it. I got the it. Last low okay. We cool. Had in, One second. In, I got it. There we go. I got it, Tim. Go ahead. All right. The last low in August 2022, I have other indicators that said that was an important low. Yes. And and I, I, I said at one point, I, said, I don't think that low is ever going to, or it's be years before that low is going to be broken. And uh, the market rallied up and has been consolidating since about April, May of this year. And we're into a, a kind of a sideways pattern. And we had a sign of strength over here a few weeks ago. Then, yes. Uh, the last couple of weeks, the market's just been consolidating. Well, in that consolidation, the uh, RSI, this is on a weekly time frame. So these, uh, so you have to have quite a bit of pressure all, all the way through the week, even though price damage was really not much in GDX or XAU, that inflation, deflation ratio on the weekly time frame went through the floor. And that's really a good thing if you're bullish. Because if you look at the RSI, it has to get below 30. And as of last week, it was 28.89. So it's below 30 right now. To get the signal, you have to close back above 30. But usually 30 is, is pretty much where it turns around at. So I don't know if we're going to rally this week or not. But if it does, uh, these signals, if you look back, uh, you know, they come maybe once a year at most. Okay. Uh, so, so it's a rare signal. Last time we had a signal was August 2022, which was correct. The market went up, and now we got another signal. Now we're in November of 2023. I see. And we're getting in the process of getting a signal. We need to close above 30 now to have that triggered. But uh, these signals are, are multi-month signals. They're not like a week or two. They're multi-month. And sometimes they can, you know, last a long time. The, the one in 2019, you know, went straight up for about six months. It kind of got back and forth. But anyhow, the, or the yeah, the 2016 went straight up for. Uh, yeah, that was a so, beauty. You know, that uh, was. I mean, that's when up. And that's when the G got other signal type things that uh, are suggesting something's close to happening here. So. Yeah, because if you take a look at this, folks, look at this for a second. The GDX went from. 17 to 45. <laughs> That's the 2016 one. That was a beautiful run, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's that the last big run, run we there. got, really. Yeah, it is the last so, big run we got, right? Yeah, so, so yeah, we, we got that going on right so now. So I guess, let, let me ask you this. What we don't know in, inside of the signal, what you just said, is that how does he get the, the correlation of the inflation deflation deal, right? We, don't, we just know that this is how this works, right? Is that correct? Right, that's how yeah. it works. Yeah I, yeah, I probably should look up the definition what he's got in there. Um, I don't know. No, no, that's all right. I was just curious. To right, out something with it. Right, but right. Uh, uh, but it's, it's like anything. It's acceleration. You know, a lot of these signals are generated through acceleration of these these uh, ratios and stuff like that. Yes, and that's what the trading public is missing. You know, they're all looking at moving averages or right. Or, uh, uh, trend lines up and down stuff. You know, the, the true meaning of, of the market, uh, a lot of times, if it gets accelerated in one direction too far, it's going to snap back to a norm. Yes. And uh, that's what this inflation deflation ratio is all about. It's, it's just gone down too fast, too quick. It's going to snap back to a norm. And and so it's, it's, it's kind of opened my eyes 
um, uh, of, of how to look at the markets. All uh, no, the, I agree. Know, accelerations I, and ratios and stuff. Isn't yeah. that, or, you know, it, it, the trend lines is kind of like the old, the old new. It's, it's the old theory. Uh, this is a step forward, I think. You know, price and volume is still very important, uh, but uh, the acceleration of, of the ratios and stuff is. It carries a bigger story. I think what the the market's going to do. No, I agree. I agree, Tim. The, the, particularly because see the ratios that you're actually using are very important because the you know like when you're talking the TLT, well the bond market is literally you know who knows a hundred times bigger than the stock market. <laughs> so you get right. a correlation there inside, and then you have the fair gauge on the other side. So I can see that in a second, man. Uh, you know that they they're all relevant. Because there's not just one thing, you know, that is moving markets. I mean, that, that's, that's the reality. I mean, you know, you, you have all these different things that are moving markets. Particularly, it's, it's just a movement of money, right? And yeah. those ratios are showing, you know, bottom line is that when there's more fear, when there's more greed. You know, because something to remember, folks, okay, these ratios work on the upside also. This is what's so cool about this. You know, yeah. it's not yeah. a one-way scene, which, you know, is very important, you know, because... There's plenty of things that can work on a one-way deal, but, you know, when you get both sides of the correlation, it's awesome because it's like, okay, when are you supposed to get out? Well, you know, we know that you got out in July. Why you get out in July? Because that ratio was basically saying, hey, you know, you better get out, man, because pretty soon we're going to be going down. And pretty soon was basically about five to ten day trading days later, folks. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, matter of fact, you know the the the, the last chart, you know chart five on you know, our discussion today yeah. was that T uh, TLT to VBIX ratio getting up plus forty, you know, and, and that ratio hit there yesterday. So what the market do today? You know, goes down. So right. I mean, it, it gets pretty close to wherever you need to do. You yep. know, so I mean, it's it's uh, you know how far it's going down. I don't think it's going to go down much. It's going to be a little scare here. And, you know, maybe we fill a gap or something, which, you know, if you look at the SPYs, there are some gaps below it. Oh, I, hey, listen, but, Matt, you know, I've got questions to him about a three-gap play. Now, wouldn't that be sweet? <laughs> yeah, and, well, actually, we did have a three. Yeah, that yeah. means you go all the way back down to yeah. 410. So, folks, I'll uh, just do this quick. Maybe later. Tim and I have traded three-gap plays many times when the yeah, OEX yeah. was there. And these are something else, man. I mean... <laughs> If we get lucky enough for that, Tim, it's going to be pretty wild, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, so. Tim, it's always a pleasure. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and we look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. All right. Love you, man. Love Thanks you, man. Know. And I'll go through this three-gap play as soon as we come back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim and I were just talking about three-gap play. So this is how this works, folks. So we had three gaps on the way up. You know, bottom line is that you had couple signs of strength, right? So you get one small one, a larger one, and a larger one, right? So what happens with a three-gap play is this, is that you get it to the high, then you come back and you fill all of them. You come all the way right back down, okay? Now, as long as you do that with lighter volume, okay, and what's happening here, we have lighter volume out here today. You're going into 102 million shares and you get 69. As long as you do that with lighter volume, what you have is that at that point there, at the bottom, that's the buy. Because the way the gaps work, when you get a three-gap play like that, that, the three-gap play, is the trend is higher. If you had, we had three-gap plays lower, that's, that's how that works. And they're phenomenal plays, you know, when you can get it right. Because what ends up happening, two different things end up happening. Just as we went up, if it's going to be a three-gap play, you're going to fill these very quickly. That's what it, it, I've seen these lay out here for like two and a half weeks at the highs before they do it. But when they do it, it's phenomenal because they come back down. And, you know, when Tim and I were playing these a lot, because there were a lot of these in the 90s, we were playing it in the option market. Because if we come back down, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God. You know, you, you, your risk is very low versus your reward. Because what ends up happening, all you have to do is put your stop underneath the last gap, and you know, you know, we go from there. But that's how a three gap play works. The biggest thing to get out of that is that whatever way that you actually gap, that's where the trend is going. As long as you do pull back and you're pulling back with lighter volume, that gives you the verification that this market still wants higher price. You get a fast and furious on the way down. You get price, price destruction without volume, folks, 
is one of the best buys out here, okay? If they're very hard to buy, don't, don't get me wrong, because when you get fast price destruction, you know, it's like, oh man, what's going on? Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 a.m. Great show, folks. Look at him, folks.